it's clear that, that Haeckel may have fudged his drawings somewhat to look more like his ideal than they actually are. Now, does that actually take away from what we know about the relationship of embryology to evolution? Not a bit. The whole Heckel's embryo story has been greatly blown out of significance. Uh, it is a minor footnote in the history of science. And actually, it's been known for 10 or 15 years that Heckel's embryos are not to be relied upon. The reason why the diagrams are reproduced is because they're um, easily available. Uh, there's no copyright on them. It's a, an easy way to, uh, to illustrate a point. And I would argue that the basic point that's being illustrated by those drawings is still accurate. But if you go back earlier in development, the different classes of vertebrates look even more different. According to Wells, Haeckel, in many modern textbooks, misleads students not just because of fake drawings, but because they leave out the earliest stages of embryonic development. What students are shown as the first stage of embryonic development is actually the mid-stage. And very few textbooks show those earliest stages, and yet that's the whole point. It's the earliest stages that are supposed to be the most similar, and they're not. Some textbooks actually use photographs of embryos, but they pick only that stage and those classes that happen to look most similar. And they omit the earlier stages, and they omit those classes that don't look similar. So that, to me, is uh, picking the evidence very carefully to support the theory, and that's not good science. Wills is a critic of Darwin's theory, but even staunch evolutionists like Harvard's Stephen Jay Gould have criticized the use of diagrams based on Hegel in textbooks. Stephen Jay Gould wrote an article for Natural History saying that we need to let go of, this, of these drawings, that uh, basically that they're not needed. But when DeHart requested permission to let students read Gould's article, that request was turned down too. Why does Mr. DeHart feel so strongly to have these articles read? Well, it's because he wants to call into question the whole issue of whether evolution happened. I don't think this is good science education for the students in that district, and apparently neither did his colleagues nor his superintendent. We have a science curriculum. We have a mainstream science theory called evolution. Our job is to teach the adopted curriculum, and that's what we follow. But just how important are Haeckel's embryos? And does a single textbook mistake even matter? If Haeckel's embryo drawings were the only problem with biology textbooks, I would agree that this is an isolated error. The problem is that it's not the only problem. In fact, says Wills, today's textbooks are filled with outdated examples for evolution which many evolutionary biologists no longer consider good science. In a recent book, he calls these the icons of evolution. The icons of evolution, these are examples uh, of textbook evidences that have taken on a life of their own. They go far beyond the truth, far beyond the facts, and have become symbols, in effect, of uh, Darwin's theory, symbols that actually distort the scientific evidence. In many cases, they're called icons by Darwinian biologists themselves. 